Hi folks, Philip Andrews here for Adobe and in this session we're going to be looking at how to create great looking photo books using Photoshop Elements 9. Producing a fantastic photo album such as one to celebrate the wedding day of a friend or a relative used to be something that just the professional photographers would do in conjunction with their professional labs and bookbinding companies. But thankfully, inside Photoshop Elements 9, we have some great tools that put you right in the driving seat of creating one of these great photo albums. You can choose to print them out on a desktop printer that you have at home, or you can actually upload them online onto the web to a couple of major companies who will then produce professional looking books, bind them for you, and post them back to you. So let's have a look at how we go about producing these books. First of all, I'd strongly encourage you to grab all of the great images that you've got from the day, whittle them down till you've just got the most important pictures, and then drag them into a newly created album. And here I've got one called The Wedding Photo Book. I encourage you to put them in an album so that you can then sequence the photos. All I need to do is click and drag the photos around, and I can change the sequence that they're in. The sequence that I have in the album in the organizer space that you see here will be reflected inside the photo book. So it's a great way to get things in order before you start creating your book. The other thing I'd encourage you to do is if you want to do any adjusting or enhancing or even editing of the images, do that before you get into the photo book. Here I'm going to actually open this photo, we'll take it through to the main editor space and just convert it to black and white to start with. So it's sitting inside the editor space now. We'll go up to Enhance and then just down to Convert to Black and White. I'm not going to change any of the adjustments here. I'll just leave it as it is and then just click OK. Once I've done that, I'll go up to File and then just down to Save. And you'll notice when I'm saving this file that I have the option to select both Include in the Elements Organizer and also Save in a version set with the original. Make sure that both these options are turned on. That way you'll always keep the original safe, but you'll keep a second copy of your changed image, and we can then choose to use that changed image in the actual document itself. Now, because this was already a JPEG, it's asking me to confirm the settings that I'm using for the JPEG, and I'm just going to click OK to those settings. Once that's saved, I'm going to jump back to the Organizer workspace. First of all, I'll close this down. Just control or command W and you notice back inside the organizer space now we actually have two versions of the same image. We have the original color version sitting with the black and white version. Black and white version is on top so it will be the one that will be used. So let's go ahead and select all of these photos. You can click and drag a marquee around all of the images like this or alternatively you can click on the first one Hold down the shift key, go to the end of the group and then click on the last one to multi-select all of the images. Then go and click on the create tab on the right hand side of the workspace. You notice we've got a range of different options here for different photo projects including the one we want to use which is photo book. So I'm going to select the photo book option. Automatically the editor space will open up and the images will be dragged into the editor space. But first of all, we need to pick both the size and the theme or the template that we're going to use for the books that we're creating. Notice that we have different options for the sizes on the left-hand side of this little photo book dialog. We have sizes for the Kodak Gallery, for Shutterfly, and also for printing locally. Now, if you just want to output your books locally, that is, if you just want to print them to your desktop printer, then you should select one of these options. But both the Kodak Gallery and the Shutterfly options will allow you to output your images to your local printer as well as upload them online to these companies so that they can produce for you professionally bound books. Now you'll notice that these sizes are in millimetres but depending on where you are in the world the sizes might be represented in inches rather than millimetres. I'm going to go and select the 304mm by 304mm square book which is roughly 12 by 12 inches. And notice we have a range of different book themes that are available for that particular size. And we get a preview on the right hand side of how 
the pages might look in that particular book. We have a range of different designs and as you go through them you will see a preview in the pane on the right hand side. There are also some designs that actually have a yellow ribbon across the right hand corner and these designs are especially for PLUS members. So if you're a PLUS member you can download these extra designs and include them in this themes area which you can then use with your photos. I know if I go right down to the very bottom of this selection that we have a special weddings option and we're going to use that weddings theme to produce our book. Just underneath these three panels you'll see an option for auto fill with selected images. If I turn this option off then the pages for the book will be created but all of the frames will be empty and it will be up to me to drag and drop the images into the frames on the book. If however I select it, which is the option that's on by default, then Elements automatically fills in all the frames, places those pictures and frames on the pages for me. Now I can always alter those later and I'll be showing you how to do that, but this is a great way to get up and running as quickly as possible. And you'll also notice that we have a number of pages option here. Now 20 is usually the minimum when you're working with online book producers because that's the minimum number of pages that they work with. But this doesn't mean that this is the maximum number of pages that you can create. You can add more pages if you need them. I would suggest sticking with 20 just to start with. I'm going to go and click OK and Photoshop Elements goes off and creates all of the pages and places the images within the pages. You'll notice that as it does so, that it will show you previews of those pages on the right hand side in the Create panel. So you can see the previews here. We have a title page and then we have several double page spreads. We can easily move between the previews of those pages by using a slider control on the right. You'll notice at the top of this panel that we have a green plus button and we can add in extra pages by just clicking on this plus button. The page that we had selected or the double page spread that we had selected at the time of clicking this button will then become the layout of the new pages that are added. If we have more than 20 pages in the book, well then we also have the option of removing pages as well. With this new layout selected, I'm going to go up and just click the minus button to take away those pages that we've just added as well. Okay, let's look at the front page front page here you can see has a frame and inside the frame is the photo itself. Now we can move the frame around by just clicking and dragging. We can adjust its size by using the corner handle or the sides handles. We can rotate the frame by bringing the cursor just outside of one of the corner handles and you notice we'll get a, a double headed arrow. We can then just click and rotate the frame around the center. Or we can rotate the frame using the rotate handle which is below the middle handle in the bottom edge. Once we're happy with the adjustments that we've made to the frame and the image together, we can then just click the green key to commit those changes. Or if we don't want to apply those changes, we can just click the red cancel button. But you'll see that the image here is actually zoomed in to part of the photo that doesn't show the top of the dress. So if I double click on the actual frame itself, then we go to a different mode. And this mode is a mode where we're working just with the photo inside the frame, rather than the frame and the photo together. And you can see here that I can adjust where the photo is sitting within the frame, or if I use the slider control, at the top of the frame itself I can resize or zoom in or zoom out the picture within that frame. So I'm just going to make it slightly smaller so it sits within the frame. Now You have to be a little bit careful about the type of adjustments you make on this first page or title page because some book designs actually have a hole in the front of the front cup that lets you see the images on the first page so just be a little bit careful about moving and adjusting the size of the frame on the front page. We also have some text here and if I double click on the text we are put into text mode and we're able to edit the placeholder text that you see here and we'll just call it my wedding day 
and then we'll go to the text below that and put in George and Sandy. So if we're happy with that, we can just click the green commit button at the top and apply those two adjustments to the text itself. If you want to change the look of the text, you can go and select the move tool, then go and pick the actual text itself and double click to apply any of the styles that you can see here. If you want to change the text in a slightly simpler way, then double click on the text, so you go back to text mode, select the text, and you can go and change the colour by selecting a different colour, and then clicking the green tick to apply. If we select the upper text now, and go up to the options bar, we can select a different font. You can see a range of different fonts here. We can select a different type of that font, so we might want to go and choose bold to add a bold look to it change the size so we can pick a larger size if we wish and we can also add some different effects here and of course change the color once you're happy with the changes that you've made click the green commit key to apply those changes okay so let's go back to the move tool now and we'll go back to the pages section of the create pane We'll move on to the next page or double page spread and you can see here we've already added the images in here's the black and white image that we created earlier and all of those photos are looking really good in that layout if we want to actually change the layout which we can just go over to the layouts panel that you see here and select a different layout from the ones that are listed there's layouts with multiple images with one photo three photos and we can add those to the design by just double clicking on that and it will apply that layout to our book so automatically it's applied that layout to these two pages we need two more images and we can add those images by either clicking here to bring up a browser to go locate our images or I find the best way is to go down to the project bin and in the project bin Let's go and find our wedding photo book. And our wedding photo album will have all our images already laid up for us. So then we can just click and drag our images from that project bin and drop them into the new layout. Automatically, those photos will then be added. So I'm just going to repeat the dress photo here. And double click to just drag it down so it sits towards the top. Beautiful. Hit the commit key and then that layout is done. Let's go back to our pages now. Go on to the next set of pages and that's looking pretty good. On to the next set of pages. Let's see how its elements has laid out those pages. We have here a slight problem where the groom's head is being cropped off so we can just double click and just adjust how the image is sitting within the frame itself. So that's looking good. Let's go down and have a look at a couple of the other pages. You can work your way through the photo book, adjusting the photos on the different pages to make sure that they're all fitting correctly. So this, in, this set of photos here, I'll just move the frames around a little bit, give us a little bit more space so that we can see what's going on. Remember, a single click will adjust the frame and the photo together, whereas a double click will work with just the photo in the frame. So there we go, Grandma and Granddad are more in the frame now. And we'll move this one over to the center. And I think we might make it just a little bit uh, smaller in the frame. So we see more. and we'll adjust the frame edges to suit. I'm just going to right click here and click on fit frame to photo. And Automatically the frame is adjusted to the size and the shape of the photo so we've gone from a vertical to a horizontal photo. Click the green tick to just finalize that image and frame combination. 
Once you're happy with how your images are looking, you see we have three different output options down at the bottom of the Create panel. We have a Done button which saves off the photo book as a project file and stores it in the organizer workspace. You can open it again later and edit the photo book, add more pictures, change the layout, add more pages and adjust the way in which your photo book is put together. If you click print well then you can output your photo book to a desktop printer. Clicking order is the option that you will use to upload your photo book to the online provider and have that third party create a professional looking hardbound book and then send it back to you. So I hope that I've inspired you to create your own photo books. It's really easy to do in Photoshop Elements 9 and the results will amaze you.